Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. I am nervous, very nervous. Um, but I'm going to get through the day. Uvalde's first day of classes is in the books, but a new investigation just beginning. The concerns surrounding DPS troopers and issues with virtual learning. And a string of storage units broken into tonight. San Antonio police making a new arrest in an old case and why that suspect went after toys. You ready? Yeah. San Antonio's getting ready. The crowds are coming to see Bad Bunny. And even though even those who aren't should still get prepared, that story is coming up. But first, we all know it was a big day in Uvalde for the first time since 19 children and two teachers were killed at Robb Elementary on May 24th. Students at that school district finally returned to class. And there were more questions tonight. Accountability still a major issue in all this. We've learned some DPS troopers that responded that day are under review for their actions or inaction. And there were also issues brought up over virtual learning for students who were not ready to go back into classrooms yet. Now, it was also a tough day for some parents. The night team's Lee Waldman is live outside of Uvalde Elementary. Lee, you spoke with parents. What did they tell you? The parents were saying they were anxious, but something that made us smile today is there were big smiles and hugs from students as they were walking out of school today. Their parents saying, though, they can't breathe a sigh of relief until their kids were safely back in their arms at the end of the day. Did you have the best first day? Yeah. Yeah? What about you, sweetheart? Good. It was good? What was your favorite part about today? Going to math. Students at Uvalde Elementary happily walked out of school and into their awaiting parents' arms on this highly anticipated first day. She, well, we were watching the news earlier and she, it said 33 state troopers and she was a little bit more happy with that, you know, and uh, especially with the fencing and everything going on here. As parents, that helps us out too. Not everyone was as assured. Mom of two, Andrea Zamora, says she has mixed feelings. You can try to have all the protection you want, but when it boils down to it, you never know how you're going to react to a situation. We saw a large presence of DPS officers at the school Monday for training. Today, those officers were patrolling and standing by gates. This comes as a DPS spokesperson announced five officers who were at Robb Elementary on May 24th are being investigated by the Texas Inspector General's office for their actions that day. Two are on leave with pay pending the results of the investigation. DPS is not releasing their names. Meanwhile, Zamora thinks her feelings of anxiety will fade as the year progresses. I guess after a few days of seeing that nothing's going to happen, might make them feel a little bit more at ease. Might make the parents feel more at ease as well. Uvalde parent Celeste Ibarra isn't so sure. I think that feeling will go away as more time passes. No. No. Mm -mm. Was it a hard decision to let them go in person this year? Yeah, it was. The district said they had almost 89% of their anticipated enrollment on the first day of school today. If we look back to last year, they had almost 86% of their anticipated enrollment then. Lee, today the first day for Uvalde's virtual academy as well for parents and kids who just aren't ready to go back into classrooms yet. The last time the district gave us an update, there were 136 students enrolled. We're hearing some rumors that that did not go so well today. What can you tell us about that? What I can say about that is I spoke with one parent who said that their child was enrolled in the virtual academy and yesterday they were given or they received an email from the district at about 440 in the afternoon and that email said the district was still working on getting everything set for their virtual academy and in the meantime the students would meet via Google Meet. Now I did email the district about this hoping to get some more information. I was told I would receive clarifying information about it and as of right now I've gotten nothing back from the district. Live in Evaldi, Lee Waldman, Case at 12 News. Disappointing. Thank you, Lee. Well, the push for answers continues, and as we get them, we're going to continue to update you on the situation in Uvalde, both on air and online.
Now new tonight, a child nearly taken from her mother. Imagine this. Police say that this woman that you're looking at, this is 35 year old Jessica Vega, tried to kidnap a four year old girl at a local Walmart. It was near 1604 Petranco Road on the city's west side. Investigators say that Vega grabbed a shopping cart with the child inside and just began pushing it. Now the mother yelled at Vega and a store employee stepped in to help stop Vega. And according to an affidavit, Vega told the woman, quote, just because she's yours doesn't mean I can't take her. That's what she said. Now, police booked Vega into the jail today on a $50,000 bond, and a loss prevention officer told police that they recognize Vega from another incident at a different Walmart. Keeping the power flowing in San Antonio, now officially the job of Rudy Garza. A board of trustees voted to approve his contract through January 31st, 2026. In return, Garza will be paid $655,000 without incentives or bonus pay. The agreement includes a two year extension option. He took over as interim president and CEO after Paula Gold Williams resigned after many in San Antonio left without power during last February's deadly winter storm. So we all know this crowds are preparing to fill the Alamo Dome and the streets in downtown San Antonio. Puerto Rican rapper Bad Bunny is going to hit the stage tomorrow, but fans, they're not the only ones preparing. The night team's John Paul Barajas explains that neighbors near the Alamo Dome are getting ready for two different reasons. So JP, let's hear. That's right, Stephanie. This concert is already sold out. Neighbors are preparing for the traffic. Nearby businesses are hopeful for big bucks. And earlier today, there was over a thousand people in line just to buy merchandise ahead of today's concert or ahead of tomorrow's concert. And this is just a taste of what's to be expected. Of course, I just want to dance. I just want to dance. When are we getting married? <laughs> um, that's my husband. <laughs> I'm just there for the vibes. I'm ready. I know all the songs. I know the whole set list. I know it's going to be super crazy. It's just pure energy. It's adrenaline throughout the whole thing. Fans are certainly excited for tomorrow's Bad Buddy concert at the Alamo Dome, and so are neighboring businesses. Between the pandemic and inflation, this could mean big bucks for their bottom line. Oh, yeah. It's going to be wild all day tomorrow, but tomorrow will definitely be like probably double, if not triple. Hopefully. <laughs> but the concert is already raising concerns about traffic. Those living nearby say they're planning ahead. Bike? <laughs> yeah, man, I don't even try to drive at that point. I, like you said, you know, I'll park somewhere further away. It's just not fun to sit in traffic on Cherry Street for an hour trying to get to a concert. Or you're not even going to the concert. I'm just trying to get some food. VA is trying to help ease with some of the potential congestion. Bus services will be available from the AT&T Center or Crossroads Park and Ride to help bring in some of the 54,000 people expected for the show. Tomorrow, San Antonio is going to be the center of the concert universe. So we're encouraging everybody to get downtown as early as you can. It's going to be a fun time tomorrow. And those bus services start at 5 p.m. The concert is expected to kick off around 7 p.m. We also checked in with SAPD. They say they are prepared and they have extra patrol going on for tomorrow's event. At the Alamo Dome, Jumbo Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. The center of the concert universe. Thank you, John Paul. All right, let's take a look at your headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. After more than a year, there may be a solution when it comes to noise from businesses that bleeds into nearby neighborhoods. Areas like St. Mary's Strip are an example. A consultant from Austin says permits could help hold businesses accountable. The business would also need to develop a sound impact plan and form an agreement with neighbors. The task force will hold a meeting to gather input for more businesses before the vote on the proposal. See what they think about the idea. It would still have to go to city council for a final vote. There are more hurdles ahead of the November elections, along with the flood of open records requests from residents. The Bear County Elections Office got a different type of request today. This is from county commissioners. They approved 259 polling sites for Election Day, but the commissioners say they actually want as many as 302 sites. Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan argues poll workers are sometimes waiting hours just to get a couple voters at some sites. She says fewer voting centers would be more efficient. It's unclear if she will be able to add any more sites before Election Day. And changes are happening at the Alamo Plaza, believe it or not. Three popular tourist attractions across the street are now closed. They're making room for the massive makeover for the plaza. 
Ripley's, believe it or not, the Guinness World Records Museum and Tomb Raider 3D shut down last night. They're going to need to move out by the end of October. Other shops like the nearby Jimmy John's and the T-shirt shop are also leaving. The plan is to create a $140 million visitor center and museum for the Alamo, an exhibition hall set to open next year. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. A $50 million grant application for the San Antonio airport denied today. The mayor weighing in on the FAA's funding decision. Also, San Antonio is trending, but for a different reason tonight. What shoes and a rapper have to do with that coming up. And take a look. This is not a store for collectibles. San Antonio police say it's evidence in a rash of crime. How the suspect was able to go after multiple victims at just a single location coming up. One man linked to thousands of dollars worth of stolen merchandise. It's a night beat update to a story we first brought you in July. Police say this guy, 36 year old Francisco Cepeda, broke into a storage facility off Tesla Road. Take a look at the collectibles he's accused of stealing arcade games, collectible cars, action figures. There were multiple victims. In one case, police say the items stolen were valued at about $30,000. We spoke with that victim a couple of months ago. You may remember him. Tonight, he says he only got about three to $5,000 worth of his belongings back from this bust. And there's another break in at another storage facility in San Antonio. The police are working tonight. Officers arrested a man and a woman who they say broke into a fenced property near Loop 410 and Marbach. It's not the first break in at Otter Storage either. There was another burglary just a few weeks ago. We asked a supervisor about the ordeal, but they refused to comment, saying there's an ongoing police investigation. Tonight, new perspective on just how devastating COVID-19 was for kids. So around the world, 10.5 million children lost a caregiver because of that virus. Take that in for a minute. Wow. That's according to research in the medical journal JAMA Pediatrics. Now, the majority of the children were orphaned, while 3 million lost their primary caregiver. Most of those children live in Africa and Southeast Asia. Now, speaking of COVID, new booster shots offer more protection against the Omicron strains, but it may not be the only shot. White House Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Anthony Fauci says that people could get shots every year if there are significant new variants in the future. We're also tracking monkeypox cases tonight. Metro Health confirms San Antonio now has 37 cases of the disease. That's up by four cases since Friday. Dozens of excuse me, doses of vaccine are still limited, but Metro Health says they are working to obtain more supply. The FAA has denied a $50 million funding request for the San Antonio airport, but the mayor says the decision not a setback for the airport's strategic plans. It's a matter of timing. The, the, the projects that were approved fell within the shovel ready category. That's not what this application uh, was was best emphasized. These are projects that are still in development. Mayor Rod Nuremberg addressing the grant denial on our KSAT Q&A at 6 o'clock. He says the city's been successful in most of its grant applications, and he thinks they will be again in the future. But the FAA opted to go with more, as he put it, shovel ready projects. The mayor says the decision will not impact timing on airport improvements. He says the city's still on track to start its biggest project, Terminal C, in 2024. Also trending tonight, an Instagram post is sparking questions for San Antonio business and artist Ye, also known as Kanye West. So the rapper said that he was interested in becoming a decision maker in a shoe company and even posted the logo for San Antonio Shoemakers. So KSAT emailed SAS to get the scoop, and in a statement, they said in part, quote, we sincerely appreciate the interest that Ye, in parentheses Kanye West, has expressed towards our company and look forward to continuing the conversation around a potential collaboration, end quote. Now, if anything develops, of course, we're going to let you know. They say, let's talk. SAS, Kanye, let's talk. Yes. Interesting. All right, <laughs> Alamo Dome outside. Bad Bunny concert tomorrow. A lot of people excited. At 6 o'clock, we were over the dome. We saw people lined up to get their merch. 
Yeah. Big day tomorrow. Yes, and tomorrow people are going to start. There's a bus service. They're going to start shuttling people in at 5 o'clock. The concert starts at 7. So you got to tell us what they're going to be dealing with around that time. I think we'll have a few pop-up showers at that point, but it's not going to be a washout or really get in the way of any bad bunny activities and whatnot. And of course, the <laughs> concert itself is in the Alamo Dome. Uh, here's our headlines here. One shot at rain this week. That's tomorrow. Tropical update coming too. We have two hurricanes in the Atlantic and even one in the Eastern Pacific and some potential development as well. Also, the infamous heat high now that our weather patterns coming down. Where's that heat high? Is it going to be moving back into town? We'll take a look at our trend for temperatures in a moment. Here's a look at our rain chances. 30% tomorrow. So obviously not a whole lot of coverage, but yes, a few pop ups expected here and there for several hours in the afternoon. Today, most of the rain was just to the south and southeast of San Antonio, especially closer to the Gulf Coast, even offshore a little bit and down in the valley. Big picture, though. This shows this little ripple in the flow near St. Louis. That's our disturbance that's screaming southward, and that's going to be moving overhead tomorrow and likely helping to induce some showers and thunderstorms. Stir things up a little bit, lift the atmosphere, lift the air, and help generate a few of those showers and storms. Here's our future cast, and as usual, don't pay close attention to the exact placement of those storms, but just the mere fact that it's popping some up in the afternoon starting around two o'clock. Yeah, a few hit or miss highly isolated showers and then very widely separated activity developing as we progress through the afternoon and early evening. Four o'clock, five o'clock, six to even seven o'clock. Notice not hitting everybody coverage pretty limited, but a few downpours randomly popping up in and around our area again about 30% coverage. Okay, let's talk about the tropics. We won't get any actual rainfall, no meaningful moisture from any tropical activity. The Hurricane K category one that's south of Cabo San Lucas right now. It's going to go northward as it weakens the rest of this week. And then in the Atlantic, we have Hurricane Earl way out in the Atlantic. That's just south of Bermuda. That's likely to become a cat three and steer away from the US and most likely even steer away mostly from Bermuda. Then Hurricane Danielle far north Atlantic. That's just meandering around right there. Cat one and it'll be weakening gradually in the days ahead. As for potential development, slight chance, 20% chance with a wave that's moving off Africa right now and a 60% chance with another wave, a little disturbance that's already just off the western coast of Africa heading into the Atlantic. Those very far away from us and no threat to the U.S. or even potential moisture for us around here. So let's talk temperatures. 93 was our high today. That's just one degree above average. And across the state, we mostly had 90s. I mean, Lubbock, 92, 95, Dallas and San Angelo. We're not talking triple digits. The triple digit heat, that's out west right now. I mean, Boise, Idaho making it to 101, Vegas 110. The key is in the valley throughout California, 100 in teens, okay, Reading 115, Bakersfield 115. We had not just daily record high temperatures, but some September record high temperatures and even a few all time record high temperatures under that heat dome and it's going to stay away from us. We're not expecting that to affect our weather mid 90s for highs the rest of this week and into the weekend. Right now we're around 80 degrees 82 officially at the airport Stinson at 80 81 in Hondo. We start the day tomorrow at 74 degrees mixture of sun and clouds 90 at noon and then 94 the high with that 30% chance later on in the day. So mid 90s that's going to be the rule and after tomorrow not even a shot at any rainfall. We're seeing the quiet weather pattern take over again. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, is the Dallas defense ready? We're going to find out pretty early. For Tom Brady yeah. in particular and his throwing arm. When we come back, we'll decide for yourself if the defense is going to be truly tested in their very first game. And how about this? Even though they're on the road, the Roadrunners are favored. Coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. When the Dallas Cowboys kick off their 2022 season this Sunday night against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they will go up against the greatest quarterback in the history of the game, seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady. With both Amari Cooper, Cedric Wilson gone, and a reworked offensive line because of the injury to Tyron Smith, the Cowboys rely heavily on their defense to start this season. What does Demarcus Lawrence, who only played in seven games last season, think of the challenge of going up against the best at his position? Everybody knows Tom Brady's the GOAT, uh, especially at quarterback and um, how precise he is with his offense. Um, you know, being able to go against him again for another uh, week one start of the season, um, it's a great opportunity for us. Um, like I said earlier, I feel like we prepare well during training camp, and uh, now it's time to let the dogs loose. 
All right, meantime, the Houston Texans are trying to change their pass with just four wins each of their last two seasons as they kick off their season with one of the toughest challenges against the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts dominated the Texans last season with a 31-3 victory followed by a 31-0 route. What does head coach Lovey Smith think about starting the season with arguably their biggest challenge of the year? I remember it when, when somebody dominates. I mean, I can tell you what happened in the seventh grade. You know, the game I lost, as Coach Arnold, I can tell you a game we lost in, especially when somebody beats you like that. It's a motivating thing as much as anything. I mean, for us to see exactly where we need to, where we need to go. Uh, so, no, we, we don't run from that at all. Can't run from our past. We can do something. We can change our past. That's what we're trying to do. The UGSA Roadrunners have to recover quickly from their triple overtime 37-35 loss to the Houston Cougars because they have to face Army next on the road this Saturday. They're being three and a half point underdogs against the Cougars. The Roadrunners are two point favorites against the Black Knights. But the preparation today started with putting their season opening loss behind them, which is especially tough for wide receiver to Corey and Clark, given his recruiting process. I was committed there, and uh, my scholarship got taken away uh, when Dan as soon as Dana Hogerson came in. So um, it was kind of hard on me, uh, but I committed here, and then uh, supposedly uh, I was getting a scholarship back, but chose not to. So as right then, I felt like God going to lead you where you need to be. Kickoff on Saturday at West Point is set for 11 a.m. The odds of the Texas Longhorns beating number one ranked Alabama and Austin on Saturday just got better, but not by much. Instead of 20 and a half point underdogs, the Texas Longhorns are now 19 and a half points behind the Crimson Tide. The Horns, as well as the Oklahoma Sooners, will be moving to the SEC soon, and this will give UT a true test to see how they stack up against the talent in the best conference in college football. This is only the 10th meeting between these two schools, with Alabama winning their last matchup, which was the 2009 BCS Championship game in the Rose Bowl, 37 21, when Colt McCoy could not play in the second half due to an injury. After serving as Nick Saban's offensive coordinator in 2019 and 2020, what is the one thing that UT head coach Steve Sarkeesian learned from the seven-time national champion? I would say discipline. And I'm not saying disciplining of the players. I'm saying self-discipline. You know, he's a very regimented man. Um, you know, he knows his routine. He stays disciplined in his routine. And then he his expectation is is his staff and his players are going to have that same discipline approach off the field and on the field kickoff in Austin on Saturday is set for 11 a.m. High school volleyball coming up next. Great atmosphere tonight at MacArthur High School. The Brain is taking on Edison in District 27 5A. Golden Bears trying to rally down two sets to none. Alyssa Cantu hits one off the block and out. Edison leads by as many as four points in the third set. But the Brahmas answer. Taylor Alston drills a spike right down the middle. Mack on a 12 5 run. Then on match point, Kaylin Lemke hammers it home. The Brahmas sweep the Golden Bears three sets to none. They are 3 0 in district play. Over at the Alamo Convocation Center, another 27 5A matchup. Highlands taking on Jefferson. Lady Mustangs trailing one set to none, but they start the second set strong. Ariana Martinez spikes it home to make it 7-1 Jefferson. But the Lady Owls rally, Lelani Rodriguez powers it through the net, off the block and down. Highlands goes on to sweep the Mustangs three sets to none. Check this out. The Burbank Bulldogs running through the tunnel at home, ready to take on Southwest tonight. Home team starts fast. Carly Carodi sets up Olivia De La Cruz, and she finds a spot on the floor for the point. 5-3 Bulldogs, but the Dragons take control of the first set with a 5-0 run. Natalie McGovern to Casey Coons for the cross-court kill. Dragons sweep the Bulldogs three sets to none. More highlights tonight on the BGC page at ksat.com. And don't forget, this is the weekend where Manu Ginobili is inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. We begin our live reports Thursday starting at 5. We'll be there through the ceremony on Saturday night. Tim Duncan giving the speech to well, he presents. Him they he really presents don't do him. a That's speech okay. anymore, but they, he presents. He'll be there for him, okay. as well as, I'm sure, a large contingent from the Spurs. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. We'll be right back after this. So tomorrow afternoon, mid-90s for most of us. Canyon Lake, 95. Gonzales 95, Uvalde about 93 degrees, and that's going to be the trend for the rest of the week and through the weekend. It really our only shot at rain is a 30% chance tomorrow afternoon. All right. Hot and dry. Pretty steady forecast there. Yeah. yeah. You just phone it in the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. GMSA starts tomorrow at 4.30. Have an awesome night. We'll see you tomorrow.